Hey everyone, welcome to Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. I'm your host, Eric Oberem. This is the podcast where the only requirement to be a guest is that you are being authentic to who you are. If you're not, I'll shut it down and I'll ask you to leave. Remember, be authentic or get the fuck out. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. I'm your host, Eric Oberemt. Today, we are in Cozumel, Mexico. I'm super excited. We've been here for three or four days already. We've got a couple days left. It's our company retreat, but I was super fortunate enough to be able to bring a couple of friends of mine with me to do some training and also to do a couple episodes of a podcast. And so I have got the honor today of speaking with my friend, Sam Taggart. Sam, thanks for being here, buddy. Well, I mean, I can't complain. I'm sitting on the beach in Cosmo right, right now. Right. So. We've, had, we've had quite the journey. Yes. You've had quite the journey getting here. Yes. I feel like, you know, I've talked about this on a couple of my lives the last few days. Um, and I talked about the people that you spend time with and the energy that they bring to you and that they or people that take energy from you. And when you have those genuine relationships with people, the hurdles that you'll go through to show up yeah. for those friends and to have those friends. And it feels really good to know that you're one of those friends to me. And I think that you know that I'm one of those friends to you, but I'd love you to tell the audience for like a two, a quick two minute recap of like what you had to go through to get here today. <laughs> so I go to Dallas and I did an on-site consulting thing there, and so I wasn't thinking passport, I think fly to Dallas. Right. So then I'm about to go get... Also keeping in mind, we had this plan for a while. Yeah, this has been planned for a while. So like, I knew flight was... So I fly Utah to Dallas, then I was flying Dallas to Mexico, then I fly Mexico to Orlando, and then Orlando home. And that was kind of my like little segue. Right. Not thinking passport. So then I, I'm in Dallas, I was like, fetch, I forgot my passport. So it's like Saturday night, I called my assistant, and I was like, hey... We, we we need to figure out how to give me my passport. So you can't overnight it, it's Saturday night. So then I'm like posting on Instagram and I find people that are flying from D Utah to Dallas on Sunday morning, right. which would have got there on time. So I was like, okay, go get my passport. And I had a, I had a, uh, I actually had a private jet going from Dallas to Utah that I was like, hey, all actually, so my assistant was like, I've always wanted to fly in a private jet. So I was like, oh, I'll fly you out. So then she was all excited. So she goes in my house, lifts up everything, can't find the passport. And I was like, like I'm talking on FaceTime for an hour, going through every nook and cranny in my house, then goes to my office, then goes to my storage. And this is the night before you're leaving. The night before, yeah, yeah. So then I wake up in the morning and I'm like, F it, we don't have a passport, so how do I get there? And all of a sudden my buddy texts me, he's like, hey, what if you just went to, Tio to San Diego, crossed the border by foot, and then flew from Tijuana to Cozumel? So I cancel all my flights. And I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could either. Right. I, I Literally, so I post on Instagram, I was like, is this a terrible idea or is this yeah. like a legit thing? Like, I'm like, are you effing with me? Like, right. <laughs> so. It seems like something. So it was Bobby in the circle. Oh, okay. Yeah. It seems like something somebody would fuck with you on. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So then I post it and I had like 20 people that are like, yeah, yeah, you can do that. So I was like, okay, 20 random people DM me like, right. oh, I've done that before. I was like, feeling pretty good about this. So I changed my flights, go across the border, get in a hotel in Tijuana on Sunday night. My flight leaves Monday morning. I get to the airport at like 5.45 in the morning. I go up to the front desk and I go to pull out. She's like, I just need your ID. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> good thing I don't need my passport. And I pull out my wallet and I'm like, where's my ID? <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> so now I lost my ID. And I was like, suck. So then I was like retracing my steps. I'm like, I don't have an ID. I don't have a passport. I'm in Mexico. This sucks. So then I book it back to the hotel, find the ID, fly back, barely make it through security, barely make it. Th I had to butt the lines, sell somebody on like letting me in right. and made it got to use your skills yes por suerte yeah. hablo espanol yes. and uh i get to mexico and i'm here now the question is can i get back that's the right, right. i mean one thing at a time <laughs> yeah one right thing at a time. but it was pretty amazing like just because we were all sitting here and we're like sam's not making it well there's no way like i was like there there's no way i could think to get here like right. i was like how do you fly here i would have never thought of that yeah. like Thank God for other people, yes. like knowing shit that we don't know, right? Like we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. I was like, well, learned a new thing today. Yeah. So Sam gets here and um, 
it was pretty cool. We got to we got to have an opportunity to get the team together, and we did a we did a little training on leadership, and that went really really well. That was exciting. Um, I think everybody got something out of that, so thank you. Like that was that was a lot of fun. Um, we're going to do another little workshop tonight on recruiting to kind of help some people learn maybe some little tips and tricks and whatever. Um, but what I want to talk about is that you and I have had a hell of a journey yeah. together, and I think that. Um, you know, people have heard me talk on the podcast before about some of the stuff that I've done and the personal growth stuff and development that I've done over the years. Um, what's cool about having you here now at this time is it all started with us in Mexico. 100%. I was 100% just a, I, I was a guy that owned a roofing company. Um, I had just started to maybe hire people a little bit. Um, I had a couple of sales guys and I had a dream, right? I had a vision of like kind of what I wanted to do, but I wasn't very clear on what it was. And we met, um, probably a year prior, we met like briefly at Win the Storm yeah, at, yeah. At, at, at that conference and we didn't talk for a while. And then we ran into each other again, I think at the same conference and you were putting together the circle yep. and I'll never forget, reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and told me that I should come to this retreat in Puerto Vallarta. And I was like, this motherfucker's crazy. And this was like a week before, wasn't it? A week before. Yeah, yeah, this was like... before. And I'm sitting in my office at, at home and then Natalie's sitting out in the kitchen and I'm like, this crazy fucking Mormon wants me to go to fucking Puerto Vallarta, honey. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not going, like, it's fine. And then I think you sent me two more follow-up texts with the bullshit line of, you can't afford not to go type of thing, right? Like, yeah. which we all say that, but for, but for some reason, like, it fucking stung yeah. when you said it. And I went out and I was like, honey, should I do this? And she's like, if you want to go, just go. Like, you love going places, just, just go. And that was literally, like, I'll never forget that day because, again, like, the stuff that we did on that trip has transformed not only me as a person, because when I went, I thought I was going to learn business stuff, right? Yeah. We talked about fucking business stuff once, maybe, right? And... What it turned into was learning how I could grow as a person, which in turn was gonna give me the opportunity to grow my team and my people and my company organically. And the stuff that I, that I brought from that has turned into what I do on a daily basis because of that one trip. And then the other ones that we've taken together, I mean, that wasn't the only one obviously, um, but that one specifically literally changed my life like a hundred percent changed me as a human yeah. being you know you just got back so for people watching Sam literally just got back from doing his own little walkabout while I was out diving and sitting on a beach for what five hours seven hours, seven yeah. hours right <laughs> and we did the same thing on that first retreat we did it for 12 hours yeah. right from nine to nine something like that and I still have the notebook from when we sat on the river for 12 hours with no technology, no food, a jug of water, and a chair that fucking broke as soon as I put it down, so I had a towel and a rock after that. Um, but I literally wrote stuff down on that that were personal and business goals, things that I wanted to do um, with my life. And I've literally done every single one of those things. Sounds like you need to go on another walkabout. I think that I probably, probably do. do. Yeah, I probably That's why do. I do them regularly. But I literally did. I did every single thing on it. Now I'm still trying to make them better. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I literally did all of those things within my company. And um, the only thing I didn't do was that I put on there that I was going to move to an island to be able to run the company. And I actually was, almost did that during COVID. And actually, like, by the grace of God, I didn't because like I wouldn't have been able to get back. Yeah. And we thought that I was going to be able to, and that was why I didn't pull the trigger on that. Like I, I smartly didn't pull the trigger on that. But what I wanted to ask you though was, what did you get today? What did you get today that you can share that like had, you know, for you? 
Yeah. Um, well, to put it in context, it's not a walkabout, it's a sit about. <laughs> You're correct. You, you had to walk about to find your yeah, sit about. You had to find your sit. Yes. So I walked 20 minutes up this shoreline and I went on the rocks and like found a little nook of like a little sand hidden in a jungle beach area where there's no one inside other than the boats that would kind of often cruise by every once in a while. And I swear they were probably like, that guy's still there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're just chilling. Yeah. And uh, I brought a chair with me and uh, sat. And, you know, I didn't touch my phone, um, had my journal, and I just sat. And, like, the first part, your brain just doesn't slow down, right? Like, it's like the first hour, you're like, bah! Yeah. And then you start to get hungry, or you start to, like, yeah. you know, and I just started to, like, meditate and just think. Like, just be quiet. And I start to pray. I start to meditate. I start to think. I start to journal. Um, and very rarely do you ever just get seven hours of uninterrupted silence in a really cool place yeah. you know so i make it a, an intention when i go on trips or when i'm in a cool place i'm like i'm gonna disappear in the jungle for a little bit or a beach or a mountain or something like that yeah um and today um one i'm building a an app and it's freaking sick we started about three four months ago and it really got clear like more and more that this technology I'm making is going to be like world changing, like for companies, for coaches, for mentors, masterminds. And, you know, I've, I've always been the type I'm like, yeah, I can like plug in or I can create and like fix all the problem that I constantly see when I'm dealing with the world that I deal with, with the consulting world and the coaching world. And then, you know, I've, I've used an LMS before and I, you know, I have hundreds of companies that I built their trainings and stuff. And I'm like, it's not it, we're missing it. And so today the, the words human development system came to my mind, which I'm like, you know, there's a learning management system is LMS. There's a CRM, you know, there's different tools or technologies that we use. And I'm like, I'm creating a new ocean. And this new ocean is designed to put people through a development system. Like you just talked about, you're like, crap, we didn't even talk about business, but then I developed a better business owner and I became a better leader. And so it's like, how do you take fitness and, and, and education and, and, and call it commercial roof sales academy yeah. and um, your habits, like how often did you work out to how often did you meditate to uh, and uh, one centralized location with communication and community that you can then track and have some coaching and accountability so when you have your call with your coach it's like where is he updating goals how are you tracking progress how are you making sure that you're aligned and, and stay aligned and what are you doing is what content are you watching and how are you getting accountability to that and like just all living in one encompassing thing and like yeah. i got so much more just like clarity around like this is your this is your next chapter sam awesome. like is it your calling like i don't know if i believe in callings right. but i think i've had a chapter of ddd experts and like the next evolution of ddd experts is really pursuing this uh expand is what it's called and uh, some other stuff but um it's a uh, it just was like so fulfilling that's awesome so that was like business yeah. related yeah um and then the other one was actually more personal related you know lexi your camera girl here and i had a two-hour conversation about sex addiction yesterday and you know it's not normal to you know like have yeah. that conversation and so with anyone with anyone especially someone you met yesterday yes yeah yes. <laughs> so when he talks about be authentic so i'm just going to send it authentically um ever since i was like maybe 10 i had a porn problem and i dealt with that all like through high school and middle school and um you know and through my throughout my marriage it would come and go and you know i did a lot of counseling around it and stuff like i went to addiction therapy stuff so when you say like roofers in recovery i'm like you guys talk about drugs and alcoholism but it's like what about sex addiction what right. about workaholicism is a thing yeah. and um and so it was interesting last night it kind of was like oh shoot so i had a recent breakup with my girlfriend and i kind of just went into this spiral of like i haven't even like looked at porn but it was like i've kind of been grasping it like you know oh i need to feel that that love that addiction yeah. to like somebody to cuddle with somebody to be with somebody to know that like i'm being validated from the opposite sex and um it's just, it was interesting because I'm realizing it's like controlling over me. And like, I was like, oh, I'm going to go on a 30 day fast and not do anything. Well, that didn't last. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm going to go on a 30 day cleanse and, you know, just not date and just date myself. And then two days later, I'm on a dating app. You know what I mean? You're just like, yeah. 
what am I doing? Like, yeah. why can I not even last like 30 effing days with myself? Right. And so sitting in the jungle by myself, I'm like, I get to date myself, like me and God. And I realized, wait a minute, I've been my whole life. I was married for nine years. Um, I was single for like, I mean, I even had like three or four girl, like girls I was with right before I met Mia within the three months that I had been separated. You know what I mean? Like just do, 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 like all consistent. And then I, I remembered this when I was sitting there, I was like, Sam, you were love being by yourself as a kid. If you would ask Sam, where do you find Sam? One of three places in his room, playing guitar by himself for hours. Like I would have gone eight hours yeah. playing music, writing music. Number two, building a fort. We lived in the mountains and I would disappear to the mountains for seven, eight hours at a time and just be alone building a fort, like no one there. And then number three was I was either playing with like my little lizards. So I was like, as a little kid, obsessed with lizards. So I see this little black iguana. I'm like, yes, this is sick. Like, yeah. Either have my lizards, my Legos or my like action figures. And it was like, my, my mom would come in and even like as a baby, she'd be like, are you awake from your nap? And I'd have been up for like three hours just chilling and not crying and just like entertaining myself right. you know what i mean and i was like oh yeah i can I like do being, that i like being alone like that is in my natural like me right by nature and like just giddy like i did not want to come home to come do this after you know three o'clock hit i was like oh fetch i gotta go back and meet up with eric but like thank you for coming no yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i was like this is amazing i love being alone i love you know and when you go through a divorce like your whole world gets shifted upside down. You're, you're, yeah. you're used to being with somebody. You like, you're, you reprogrammed how you live. And I was like, oh wait, natural Sam. I never had a girlfriend before my mission until I was 21 was my first girlfriend. Oh wow. So like it was like, it wasn't my normal MO to be like right, with, clinging to somebody. Right, like right, right. I was like, oh, oh yeah. I know that Sam. I like that sound. So that had to be freeing. Oh, it was like liberating to be like, it's okay to be alone, dude. Like, why you came in here skipping? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, that's legit. Like, it's okay. You needed that. I needed that. Like, I knew that you needed that. I just didn't know how for you to get that. Yeah. You know, like, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like, it's okay for Sam to be yeah. alone. Like, yeah. I enjoy that. Like, yeah. that Sam is actually pretty cool Sam. Like, I think you need an accountability partner for this, though. So. Oh, I already texted my friend. Okay, all right. I was going to say, <laughs> but you can be I'm going to check in with you because, I yeah, like, I think you definitely need an accountability partner for that. Cause, yeah. Because it's tough. Like, not, not joking, but, like, it, it is. is like, it's tough. Like, that's a tough thing to do. Just like... No, it's interesting. Like I was thinking about like, you know, take recovery in an addict, you're scheming, you're, you know how to, you know, you get to Cozumel and you're like, where am I going to get my meth? Like, you know, you figured it out. You're like, I'm sure there's somewhere in oh, here you could find. Yeah. You talk to this guy, he'll talk to this guy, he'll put in the right direction, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with sex. It's the same thing with the chick. It's like, yeah. you know, you'll, here's my standard. And then you slowly like maybe whittled it down. I don't know. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, you know how to go get your fix, whether that's. And, and so having accountability is huge. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. So I hope that didn't offend anybody, but be we authentic. Don't, we don't give a oh, fuck. Oh, wait. <laughs> I didn't get kicked off the show for not being authentic. No, no, <laughs> not yet. No, uh -uh. no, no. We can literally, that's what I love about this is that, yeah, I talk about this in every episode, but um, I did this selfishly because I wanted to have an opportunity to like sit with people that I like and just hang out and talk and see what organically comes up, right? Like, we, I had no intention of talking about that. You know what I mean? Like, I had no idea that that was what was gonna come up, yeah. um, but that's what I think makes it fun. The other thing that I wanted to, um, to talk about was that the idea, part of the idea behind this show, this podcast, was also birthed at one of our trips together right it's amazing the shit that we've done together right like i know i've watched your journey and i go like how job. the fuck Let's, did that happen yeah. you know what i mean and even and, and yours too like when we met you look like a fucking skater and you know what i mean Still like inside I yeah snowboarder, but. but you know what i mean like yeah. i mean but like your journey ha has obviously changed you you know uh, we're all on journeys yeah but but this this birth um fucking bugs um this birth in where we're at idaho yeah so we were in Idaho, and prior to breaking my arm, um, we did a little exercise where um, we had a group of like three or four, I think it was, and you gave everybody a word 
that started with A. Yeah, it was the 12 A's of authentic, or 12 A's of influence. 12 A's of influence, thank you. I could never remember that part. And the funny part was, and I don't know if you were standing there when this happened or not, but you gave us the words and somebody else got authentic. Yes, I do remember this. And, and I looked at them and I looked at whatever word I had yeah. and I looked at them and I was like, nope. They're like, what do you mean? And I was like, that's mine. And they're like, no, it's mine. Like he gave it to me. And I'm like, don't care. I, I was like, that word, I was like, yeah. that's mine. Like, that's my word. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and gave it to me. <laughs> it's like trading words. I know. <laughs> there was no way I was letting somebody have that. Yeah. And I took that and then we, we got to do like a little five minute presentation. I think it's actually up on the YouTube channel, that little five minute presentation. Yeah. I have it on there. And I was clunky and fucking researched some stuff and you know, like what does the word mean and blah, blah, blah. And from that, I got so much um, positive feedback from A, that five minutes, but then as I talked about it more, and then you gave me a platform to be able to speak on leading with authenticity. And what was really funny is that that first presentation that I did a year ago at d 2 con I didn't really understand my purpose behind it. I just wanted to show what authenticity looked like. And I knew that that was in you. Like, and I'm like, Eric, run with this. Right. And it went really well. Yeah. But then over the last year, I reframed it all because I realized how people want to follow those people. Yes. But I didn't realize that a year ago. I realized then later that that's what I had been doing and that was why people wanted to work with me and, and wanted to follow and learn how to lead and all that kind of stuff. And so I shifted kind of the presentation to the purpose of this is to learn it about yourself, but how do you implement it into your life and into your business so that you can get a cult following? And I, I said that just to stir up shit and so people would pay attention, right? But but that is that's all our goal. Like we all want a cult at the yeah. end of the day, right? Like well, no, I mean, a lot of people want a, a prophet to follow too. They right. want they want a most people. And I'm not trying to be a prophet to follow. No, but, but like, <laughs> but just natural history. Like, you yeah. just take psychology of communities, groups, chiefs, tribes. They want to be part of a tribe. Call it a tribe, not yep. a cult. Oh, Call okay. it a yeah. chief of a tribe. Yep. And and in today's world, the tribe doesn't have to necessarily be in your backyard. It doesn't have to be like down the street at a community church. Like, right. it could be, wow, I resonate with this person and the way they show it for the world. I'm I'm a follower of that person. Right. Right. And so that was what I was trying to teach in the last one. And that was the most fun I've ever had getting to speak to an audience before. And I mean, the thing was done and Lexi and I brought some swag to hand out. And like, I forgot that I even brought it. And then like, right as people were starting to walk out, I was like, oh, and I grabbed the mic and I was like, I got some swag out here for the podcast. If you guys are subscribing, whatever, if you want to come up. And it was like a fucking mad rush. That's awesome. To the to the front and like people coming up afterwards and wanting to talk and have conversations. I had three people come up and ask how they could help their kids with recovery stuff and you know or their friends or whatever and you know that what I've learned about me is that that's where I thrive and get my energy is figuring out how to help other people grow and how to get other people and whether it's recovery or it's whatever it is. I like, I don't care. Obviously like recovery is super close to my heart because I'd be dead, you know, if I wouldn't have found Valley Hope and you know, my, my rehabilitation center and all that kind of stuff. So like, obviously I'm super passionate about that. Um, well, the, there's something, there's something to be said about the 12 steps recovery, drugs and alcohol is the easiest external, like visual element of yep. a recovery, but every single person has to go through the 12 steps and whatever that is. I'm talking about sex addict. I'm, but but it's just repentance. It's it's growth only comes through when you're allowing yourself to go through those twelve steps. And it could just be your relationship with your parent. It could be it could be anything. It's like just admitting what is, you know, f amending whatever happens. Yep. Like that is what the progression of growth is. And so it's just your your the context in which you're able to communicate it is roofers and recovery right. or recovery. But it's like, what you're really passionate about doing is helping people change their life. Right. Like whatever that is. But I never knew you that about framework. me. Yeah. Like I never knew that about me. I thought that our 
mission for being here was to figure out how to earn as much money as humanly possible so we could have all the cool shit yeah. and have our family have all the cool shit and never have to worry about money. And I think that that's what a lot of people think, right? I mean, so true. You know, and, and granted, like, and I tell my team this all the time I'm like, you know, we want to help people, that's what we want to do. Understand if we don't sell a fuckload of widgets, because roofing is my widget. Yeah, it's a widget. Right? But if we don't sell a fuckload of widgets, we can't do any of those things. So like our helping is based upon your performance because I can't do it all for you, but I want you to get on board with what we're trying to do so that you'll hopefully sell more widgets so that we can use those resources to go help more people. And I think that's resonated with the team a lot. I know it's resonated with Lexi and like a lot of the other people on the team, like we have this meeting a couple times a year and I'm like, Remember guys, this is why we're busting our ass. Yes, you're all gonna make more money and we all wanna buy nice things, but we also wanna help people, but we can't do that if we don't have the revenue to do it. Um, and I think that's completely transformed. I assume you do something very similar, you know. 100%. At your place of work. Yep. Which is like 97 different things now. Somebody asked me, what's Sam, what does he do? And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I'm me, I be me. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if I had to tell somebody how you generate revenue, I'd be like, I don't know. Like There's no fucking clue. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. But like, I really don't know. I but, don't know. Out of, out of all the things you do, what's the one that you're most passionate about? Um, our events. I okay. mean, I like our experiences, like our mastermind. Because yep. yep. I, I can get, like you just telling me this story puts a smile on my face because I'm like, I'm passionate about helping people and the right. most proximity that I get to have with people is through our mastermind. So yeah. it's like we're hosting epic experiences. This year we're going to Switzerland. Yep. You know, we do these deep dives every quarter, you know, and, and being able to like go into a company or go into an individual and say like, like I had a girl today, I'll just read you the text and I'm not going to say names, but like, you know, she's a, she owns a roofing company out of Maryland and she sends me this. Like when you, when you get a text like this, it feels so good. She's like, Hey, I, here's some honesty. The very far, hard thing for me to say out loud, but I never turned my camera on because I was so disappointed in my weight. I turned my camera on yesterday and I'm accepting myself more for where I am today with the sincere knowledge that I'm making great changes to my health and mental well being. That's a huge step for me yesterday. First time I've turned my camera on since I've been involved with DDD. Thanks for digging into, into the limiting beliefs of grit and many other things. You know, she had this insane insecurity because she used to be this big athlete and now she's overweight and it's like, you know, for me, I'm like, cool, how many millions did you do in revenue last year? I don't care. But, like, now that you're finding confidence to turn your camera on on one of our group Zoom calls and, like, yeah. actually, like, show face. And, and what like, a small thing that's such a big thing. So, like, I would have never even thought. But it's like, right. but now I'm challenging her in a lot of ways to where, you know, she's building a new relationship with her body image. Right. And, you know, so the thing I'm passionate about is our mastermind group because I, I truly have seen people like you or Jody, that was yesterday, the day before that, another chick, Amy, she's going through some stuff. I'm just texting them and just being like, hey. So like, much for not naming names. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, oh, Josh, you probably don't know. Um, <laughs> sorry. Well, authentically, they won't. And we don't cut anything. Yeah, so. okay, good. If they see this, you know I love you, and I'm supporting you. And now that story just inspired other people. Yes, 100%. Um, so, and, and we we preach that. Like, you know, I at our events, it's like we make people go so deep and authentic. Like, we force it, and we say, we'll pull the genuine realness out of you because none of us care to help you as superficial, surface-level people. And those are the people that don't last in my in my group. They're like, no, they they're don't. The people, they're they they're don't. like, this is weird. Why are we doing all this stuff? Right. And I'm like, you just don't get it. Right. Okay, that's fine. And you'll right. last six months or a right. year, you'll stop coming, and that's fine. But when everybody met me the first day, they were pretty sure I wasn't going to oh, make it either. I was scared of Eric. Let's put it this way. <laughs> I was like, oh, Fetch. Because I was like, pretty straight edge Mormon dude. Like, yeah. He just starts dropping F bombs everywhere. I was like, dude, like, some of these people are uh, not so keen to the words of the F bomb. Which like, is exactly why I did it. Yeah. And like, I, that's how I introduced my. You but know. the learning that I got to learn was like, oh my gosh, like, he is just that way and I get to meet him where he is and I am this way. But what's interesting is I was putting on some fake face element and and not that it's like, I don't swear as much, right? right. But like, if I just all of a sudden did start swearing a ton, then people be like, that's not you, Sam. Either. Right, like, exactly. Sam, Sam's words are the fetch and right. the Right, and the, right, yeah, she you know, is. She is. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still okay with that, like, yeah. I, like that's me. Um, but like, I just think, you know, we do the online stuff, we do the events, we do all these other things, but like, you know, a big 
passion of mine is that. And then we're moving into this nonprofit piece, which is Street Smarts. Have I told you about that? Uh-uh. Ah, it's pretty bad, eh? So this summer, or February 24th, we're going to go sponsor this big chapter of Decades, this big sales tournament, 2,400 kids, all doing pitch-offs, and we're doing the prizes and judging for them. And, and then in the summer, we're recruiting high school kids to join a competition to compete who can make the most money, competing for street smarts, like curb painting business, lawn mowing business, oh, wow. car washing business. Wow. And we're doing like huge prizes and stuff for all these high school kids. Yeah. And so then like... It's literally teaching the shit that you don't learn in the books, but you learn it only in the streets. Like school, the stuff they don't teach in school, you just learn in the streets. And it's like teaching entrepreneurship and communication and grit That's to awesome. all these high school kids. It's pretty dope. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So we're trying to get into Nationals DECA tournament, which is like nice. 24,000 kids in Atlanta in April. And yeah. like we're like doing big sponsorships and such. Nice. It's going to be epic. That's awesome. Well, I hope that you will, uh, you already are. So Sam is already helping us, um, but we're kind of coming to the end of time here. And I want to always, in every podcast, I'm going to talk about National Roofers and Recovery Day. And so we're doing that big push and we're going to, you know, use all of our groups to try and recruit people. We want to get 150 contractors throughout the country to build a roof on the same day and donate the profits. Pay your suppliers, pay your pay your labor guys and just donate the profits from one roof on Ju on June 3rd. Right. So on June 3rd, so we need to raise over three quarters of a million dollars this year to reach our goal of sending 50 people to rehab. And so that's hopefully on that day we can raise um, a lot of it is the goal. Um, and then be able to have a big gala at the end of the year to thank all those people, bring more people in and have some big, big, big speaker come in and tell their story and resonate with the crowd. And um, I think it's cool that like somehow we both got into this like passionate about nonprofit stuff and, and helping people. And, you know, I, I want to end the podcast. I know we're wrapping up, we're wrapping up on time here, but like, I just want to take a moment one more time to honestly and genuinely say thank you, like from the bottom of my heart, because who the fuck would have thought three and a half years ago yeah. that three and a half years later, we'd be sitting here together on my podcast, yes. sitting out looking at the ocean and spending genuine time together. You know what I mean? Like, and, and growing together as friends and, and having real genuine conversations and not like, you know, give me 10 grand and you can come on vacation with me. You know what I mean? Like, that's an amazing transformation of people. Um, and it proves that like, you don't have to be the same person to relate and grow with somebody else. Because when we met, we couldn't have been more fucking different. So different. Like, you were the so last of the people I would have been like, oh yeah, that's my type of homie. Right. And then I start to realize, I'm like, wow, most people I connect with are so fake. Like, Right. And, and I mean, I would call you one of my closest friends. Like, you know that you can call me with anything and you have. And I know that I can do the same. I might might take three or four days to get a text back, but I know that <laughs> because that's just fucking Sam. So that's fine. Doing really that's fine. That's fine. I know that about you. But um, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you again because this has been amazing. I appreciate you being here, um, and I know that my team's gotten a lot out of it too. So awesome. thank thanks you. a lot. Well, hey everybody, thank you so much uh, for tuning in again to be authentic or get the fuck out. And. Um, I'm going to say it twice because I fucked that up. So we're going to end it just like we do every podcast. Remember, be authentic or get the fuck out.